So these mornings here, those are my favorites. August mornings, before the trees turn orange, yellow, but we're still getting this absolutely gorgeous morning mist. It's completely silent. The only thing you can hear are the birds and an occasional car out on one of the bigger roads. But as you can see, I'm trying to find compositions among all these trees. Here's an old trunk, some stumps. And the one I've found right now is one in here. As you can see up on my camera, it's a little bit hard to see. Let's see, turn this one down. So I have a few trees in there and then I have the fog to separate it all. And yeah, there's not a whole lot to it. F16, ISO 100, overexposing a little bit because of the fog as to get all the information. Gives me a shutter speed of 10 seconds. And that's about it. But it's all about zooming into this relatively intimate scene with a few trees. I have that old birch tree trunk and then I have some foreground oak trees, background oak trees. And then it's all yeah, separated by the mist. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just a very beautiful, very pretty little scene. So I've come a little bit closer to the scene actually, but I am focusing into this part here right now. So I have something like this, whoops, always turning it the wrong way, you can see here. So I have a little bit of heather in the foreground and then I have the trunks in the background. It's probably easier to see here and again use the mist to separate the scene. Now when the scene is as flat as it is and I'm also overexposing a little bit it's hard for the camera to autofocus so I put it into manual focus so I simply just enlarge my screen. You can hardly see what's going on here let's do it like this here. So I enlarge the screen and just zoom in and then I simply just manual focus until it looks right. I do have focus peaking enabled, but it doesn't really show here. I don't need focus peaking right now anyway, because I can't see how well it is. And then I simply just have two second timer on it and get a beautiful, calm photo. So this next one here is actually almost the same photo as before, but it goes to show that it's always a good idea to just play a little bit around with the scene and try different angles. So I've just moved a few meters, simply just moved a little bit over, and now I have this scene here instead. And the one thing I really like about this scene is that I've now put the beech tree here, or silver, not beech tree, birch tree, right here in the middle. And then I have uh, two darker trees around it. I also have a little bit better of a foreground, I think, with the heather, how it's distributed in the scene as for me to keep like a proper balance in the photo. So you can see something like this here. 
Again, completely the same settings. What I didn't say before was that it's also a good idea, at least for me, I usually, when I focus on these long lenses, right now I'm shooting at like, I don't know, 100 millimeters with my Tamron 28-200. I'm also focus taking the scene simply just so I am in focus with the foreground. There's not a whole lot of mid-ground here and then into the trees. I don't care too much about the background behind the trees, but at least up until the trees, the entire photo, I aim for it to be in focus. Comparing these two photos side by side, I actually really like both of them, but the first more than I expected. The structure of how the trees are placed in the scene on the right photo is stronger, but in this case I actually do not mind the less structure of the left photo. After all, I think it reflects the randomness of a forest much more. I think there is an argument for both of them, and I bet they would actually look great hanging side by side in a wooden frame. Let me know down in the comments which one you prefer, and while you are down there, I would highly appreciate a like. Likes, comments and subscribes really help to push my videos out to even more people on YouTube. Also, if you want to learn more about composition and landscape photography, be sure to get my two ebooks. I try to teach my philosophy around composition in a very easy and straightforward way with little text and a ton of photos as examples. Each chapter deals with one subject and in the final chapter I bring it all together as to make sense of what you have learned. Both ebooks have got loads of great reviews which I am ever so thankful about, so a huge thank you to those of you who have already got them. There are links to both ebooks in the description of this video. So the sun has started rising and it's throwing its colors up onto the clouds. It's a little bit hard to see, but nice pink cloud here. We have some pink clouds over here and a little bit over here. And I've come by the scene, well, I basically just turned around 180 degrees. And I have this little silver birch rest thingy here, which has been cut down. And then I have a couple of trees and I'm not sure if it's like, you know, over interpreting <laughs> this scene, but what I'm kind of seeing is of course the two alive trees and then the dead tree here and then some redness to somewhat symbolize, I don't know, that blood has been spilled this night. <laughs> <laughs> too much Lord of the Rings here. <laughs> uh, it's, I, I don't know if it's over interpreting a landscape photography scene uh, with a bit of a little bit of red in the sky. And then of course the rest of the scene will be mostly in, in the blue tones. And I have that dead tree. I will also try to find a composition where there is not the big tree on the left there. I think that might work a little bit better. So still have a little bit of redness there in the sky, but I went into vertical format instead and then I will probably crop it a little bit maybe down to a 4x5 or something like that but I think that may work out a little bit better <laughs> than the previous version with the other big tree but yeah it just keeps being a beautiful little scene no wind whatsoever so calm so beautiful. So I sometimes I do feel that some of my woodland photography lacks a little bit of depth. Not so much when I'm photographing inside a forest, but when I'm in an area like this, 
I have a tendency to really zoom in. And even though I have layers in the photo, I'm photographing at such a narrow <laughs> focal length that you can still kind of see that it has been taken from a distance. And I'm watching a lot of woodland photography on Instagram. I absolutely love seeing what others get around. And, and one of the guys that I really love his work is Lee Dory. He lives in England, southern England-ish, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> But his photographs are just, there's so much atmosphere in them and they are such, taken from such intimate and calm scenes, just like the one I'm in right here. And right now, I have actually found one of those small compositions where I'm photographing at like, I don't know, 40 millimeter or something like that. So I do get a little bit more of that wide angle effect. And as you can see here, I have my camera right here. And then I'm photographing this scene with the silver birch here and the one in the background. And then I'm including some of these leaves here. And from what I can see right here, right now, I just absolutely love, 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 love this super simple, intimate little scene. I have been playing, well, mingling a little bit around <laughs> with the composition. I've had the tripod a little bit further over. I've had the center column a little bit further down, lower to the ground, trying to figure out how to exclude the sky up here while still including the scene in and of itself. How wide can I go? Do I have to go a little bit further back or can I actually go a little bit closer as to get that depth in the scene that I really want? And then of course we have the mist to separate the foreground from the background and it just looks oh, oh, oh it looks so good this here could be one of those photos that i would like to hang on my wall it's so beautiful i would i will try to play a little bit more around with it not for too long five minutes ten minutes and uh, and see if i can find a composition which may be uh, slightly more balanced, slightly better, but yeah, nice. I want to circle back to what I mentioned in the start of the video in regard to these conditions and why I consider late summer and early autumn to be the best time of year for my landscape photography. At the very least the kind of photography I do that rely heavily on vegetation. Firstly, the chance of fog and morning mist is much greater at this time of year in the latitudes where I live than during midsummer. This atmosphere makes a massive difference to the photos. The fog usually plays a significant role in the composition and the final interpretation of the photo delivers a calm and wondrous feeling. Secondly, contrary to the warm and arguably more dramatic autumn colors or the warmer green colors you get in early summer, the often darker and colder greens you can capture in late summer and before autumn sets in are in my opinion just as important as fog or mist to deliver a calm atmosphere with a reminiscence of summer. Overall it just gives a relaxing and optimistic interpretation of the photo photographing woodlands at this time of year. And thirdly, for a few weeks in August and September the heather is blooming and including the violet flowers in the photos gives another element of color which like the green leaves gives an optimistic summer vibe. The violet color also delivers a gorgeous color contrast to the green leaves which in itself usually is very pleasing and ups the aesthetics and depth of the photos. Now, I do realize that this is very subjective. Some photographers prefer autumn, some winter, or spring, or summer. The weather characteristics of each season also highly depend on your geography. 
after all, it's often during summer that you can get those beautiful storm chasing photos. Whereas winter has its characteristics. For me, it did take some experience and honest introspection to figure out my favorite season. As a beginner photographer, I did join the hype around autumn landscape photography, but I gotta admit that although autumn photos can be beautiful and jaw dropping, they are rarely the kind of photos that I want to hang on my walls. A good amount of my favorite photos can't even be photographed in late summer or early autumn. So it's not that I'm saying that there is a best season for landscape photography. There is just something about that season that I somehow just relate a little bit more to than the others. If you want to learn even more about editing, I cover a ton of different techniques in my more than 19 hours post-processing course Photoshop for landscape photographers. Among a lot more, I cover all the techniques I use to edit the photos in this video, such as editing with luminosity masks, focus stacking, controlling colors, and cleaning your photos from debris and distractions. I've built up the course progressively as to make sure the transition from only using Lightroom to start using Photoshop is as easy as possible. I also cover my philosophy about editing, what mistakes to avoid, how I curate my photos, and much, much more. Be sure to check out the link in the description for the course and the ebooks, and there is even a discount code for the Photoshop course in case you want to save a little money. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you can spare a like, I'd highly appreciate it, and let me know what photo from this video you liked the most.